Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the third hand binding tool, various fabrics that I've added to my stash, announcing the next sew along coming next week. Mally the maker, the four pack video bundle is now available and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for the show. I saw everyone chatting beforehand on both Facebook and YouTube, so I really appreciate those that make a little bit of time before the show to chat with their fellow bag makers. Um, I see Jean's watching from Virginia, Angel Dragon from Florida, and Mary Grace from Colorado. So welcome, whether you're watching us live or watching the recording of the show later on in the week. Um, Danny and I really appreciate you um, tuning into Social Sunday. Just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during the show are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I've found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link and you can find out more information there. So um, the notion of the week, I've had this sitting on my desk for, I would say probably months. So I'm finally getting around to talking about it on Social Sunday. And I'm not sure, I think I caught a glimpse of this on social media, but it's called um, the third hand binding folder clip and it's useful for making binding for your quilts or other projects, either um, cut fabric at two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can um, show you what it looks like up close. So this is the tool right here. It has a portion over here that's adjustable and sort of screws in place to hold the positioning um, to deal with varying widths of ironing boards. Uh, so it fits really well on my padded ironing board. And I'm also, for tonight's demonstration, I'm using my t totally tubular um, pressing station just so I can get something to use on set and it fit on this as well, even though it's a little bit thinner. Um, so it has this little U-shaped groove over here and that's where the fabric gets inserted. And um, actually, while you're pressing, you'll just be pulling the fabric out one end and pressing with your iron in order to um, prepare your binding. And this little slit at the top is for if you need to um, use a pin to kind of uh, pull the fabric through, um, gently nudge it through. And I've got my um, pins over here, just in case my magic pins, just in case um, I need to uh, pull the fabric through. So I've got my um, pressing station over here and I'm going to go ahead and let me give you a side view of attaching this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew this, make sure it's nice and snug, and then I'm going to screw it back in place. And then before the show, I, I cut a few strips of, I often use two and a quarter inch strips, so I'm that's what I cut my mine at, but it'll work for two and a half as well. And you just sort of position it, get it going in the U shape, and I starched this before the show, so it's it's going through quite easily, but just in case you needed to use the pins, you would just use the pin and kind of uh, kind of gently nudge it forward with the pin if you needed to. Okay, so position this on your ironing board where it's easier for you to get to, and then as you, as you pull it through, um, you can just press it. So obviously it's called the third hand because it does act as a third hand holding, um, sort sort of holding this in place so you can get the fabric so it's not kind of like jiggling around on your ironing board. But um, I thought this was a pretty nifty tool, um, nice and small, fits nicely in the, the sewing room stash. But um, again, this is called the third hand and I've linked to this in the description in case you're interested in checking out more. Okay, so earlier today I received an email from Terry and she wanted to see some of the number five zipper pulls um, I guess in real life um, or in my hand. So um, let me move some things out of the way. So I've got, I don't have every single zipper pull that we stock uh, at home with me, but I pulled out the ones that I do have. And again, these are the number five pulls. Uh, we also carry number three 
zipper tape. Um, but these are, they are these are for the number. Uh, thanks, Danny. These are for the number five uh, zipper tape. So on, on our website, this one's called Lovely. Oh gosh, I think this is just called Star. This is called Donuts. Um, I'm blanking on the name for this one. Obviously, this is uh, Thunderbolt. The biggest pull, um, if you're looking for size reference, is Hollow. I think we're sold out on these right now. Uh, we're expecting some, um, I don't want to say soon, soonish. They, they are in order. Um, I would say this is the most popular one that we carry. Paw print, and um, this is a really cool sewing machine one. And if Danny could flip to the, so the Hollow one I'll show you. I pulled a bag um, from my shelf so I could show you. Um, for also size reference. Uh, this is the Starling bag and I've got the hollow pull on the sides of the bag over here. Um, again, the hollow's uh, the, the bigger of the, the selection of pulls that I shared, but I really like I really like the, the big feel of the bigger, the nice feel of the bigger pull in my hand. So um, if, you're, if you're really into zipper pulls for your zipper tape, um, on the first of the month uh, going forward, we'll be debuting new and special items uh, on our website on the first of every month and I'll let you know about those on the, the live shows and in our newsletter. By the way, if you're not signed up yet for the newsletter, there's a link in the description so you can sign up. And um, among the new items will be some cool zipper pulls. I, I chose some that I thought were unique and for different purposes, kind of like the paw print is and the sewing machine, they're sort of like for specific purposes, perhaps if you're making a special gift for someone. So um, stay tuned for um, new zipper pulls later this year. So um, I've gotten, let's see, Mary Grace says, I just used a star from So Sweetness for a project today. Yay, that's awesome. Thanks so much, Mary Grace. The star I've used on a bunch of projects, actually the hollow one. Um, I don't know. I just like how it looks. It's it's pretty cute and it's, it's small. Sometimes you need a, a smaller pull. Um, especially if you're working on a smaller project like a pouch. So new fabrics that I've added to my stash. I'm going to have Danny flip back to the overhead camera. This is a print that I got from Hawthorne Supply Company, which is one of my favorite online shops. Um, I really love the birds in my yard, so I picked up this chickadee print, and it's also available in other colorways. Also from um, Hawthorne Supply Company, I got this sort of canvas fabric and it comes in other prints. There was one with a sewing machine. I only got the one with the scissors, but um, I thought this was pretty cool and it comes with a, a light background as well. Not sure, maybe a larger bag I'll, I'll use um, or maybe the Amethyst Project bag. Maybe I'll make one of those with that fabric. I got this for Danny. I'm not sure what project for, but it's a Star Wars fabric and I thought it was pretty great because of all the not negative space since the whole thing is filled with artwork, but I really like the light and then just obviously the, the Darth Vader's over here. And the last set of fabrics are all designed by Sally Kelly from her Eden fabric line. I didn't pick up every single print, but just the ones that I liked the best. These will probably be for pouches just because some of these are smaller scale prints. Uh, I super love this one. Let me see if I can open this one up a little bit more so you can see some more of the design. Um, really, really, really great. Love the colors. And then this one I got, I think for a lining, just because it's uh, sort of a smaller scale blenderish type print. Uh, so I've linked to all of these fabrics in the description in case you're interested in any of these. I think my favorite is, I know bugs are kind of gross sometimes, but I really like this one the best. And it also comes in sort of a cream background, which um, was out of stock at the time, but I'm going to go back and um, pick it up later this week. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments um, if we're talking about Star Wars, Star Trek, or another um, space-themed film or TV show. Let me know in the comments what your favorite is. Um, Danny saw my outline because I always send him the outlines before the show. And he said, you picked that question when I'm not on the show. So Danny's obviously very into that theme of uh, film and TV shows. I'd have to say my favorite is Star Wars. What about you, Danny? Yes, Sarah, you called. <laughs> My favorite would be uh, Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. I should have put that one in the mix, too. Yeah, we love Doctor Who around here. 
um, announcement. Um, thank you so much uh, if you voted on my poll from last week about which of the four new patterns should be featured in the sew along. I have to say I've never seen a vote this close because the acorn wallet and the blazing star bag were since the beginning neck and neck like less than a percentage away the whole entire week uh, but the blazing star bag edged out at the last second for um, highest vote getter so that will be our spring sew along danny's going to put a graphic on the screen right now for our sew along schedule so we're going to kick it off next week um may 15th will be the beginning of week one and um, it'll just be cutting out fabric and attaching to interfacing and uh, the first few, thank you, uh, making the zipper pockets. So starting with the very easiest steps, starting slowly. Um, so start assembling your fabric and supplies. And um, this is a really great crossbody bag and I really adore the size. It's for me, it's a, a really great size, but lots of pockets for storage space. I will be sending this schedule out in our newsletter tomorrow and also posting it on the blog and also um, on social media just in case uh, you missed the show or would just like a reminder. And just for scale purposes, this is the Blazing Star bag. And um, yeah, it's a great size and I love that front zippered pocket. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about the so long, it will be... Um, work at your own pace so if you're not able to complete the tasks um, every single week on time perhaps you fall a little bit behind or would you you'd like to work ahead no problem after you finish the task for each week uh, whenever you get to it just snap a quick photo because every week um, there will be prizes out of those who are working with us um, for the sew along and those will be randomly drawn prizes so all you need to do is um, I'll update you with the blog post for posting for the week one um, um, assignment. Um, so stay tuned for more information there. So the book review for this week is actually, I didn't finish reading the book, but it was recommended by Sandra emailed me about this book called um, Mally the Maker and the Queen in the Quilt. And it's a perhaps middle school age uh, appropriate book. Um, I'm going to read just from the back of the book. It was written by Leah Day, who you might be familiar with her as uh, a quilter and also a machine quilter. Um, so the book is almost, it's about 265 pages long, so a, a good length for a book. No pictures in the book, um, but here's what it's about. Uh, Ten-year-old Mally Spencer can't stop crying. Six months ago, her grandma, her favorite person in the world, disappeared without a trace. Everything has gone from bad to worse, and now Mally's fam family is falling apart. But then a chance discovery in grandma's sewing room catapults Mally into the world of quilts, where everything is made of fabric and stuffed animals can come to life. Is this where grandma has been the whole time? Mally sets off to search, but is quickly caught by the powerful queen of quilts. In order to free herself, Mally must overcome her worst fears and learn how to stitch herself free. She'll have to become more than just a kid playing make-believe. She'll have to become a maker. Mally the Maker is the first installment of a delightful quilting fantasy series created by Leah Day for quilters of all ages. Growing up in a small town in North Carolina, Leah mastered sewing, crochet, and knitting as a young girl and hopes to inspire a new generation of kids to pick up needles, thread, fabric, and yarn and learn how to make beautiful things. So... Um, I read a couple chapters earlier today and um, definitely correct when, when the back of the book says that um, Mally has a lot of fears, can't stop crying, um, but I know she's going to come out uh, at the end of the book um, being a lot more braver, having learned, learned a lot more things, and I just love that this is uh, sewing themed and, and quilt themed, and it's a book for uh, younger readers. So again, it's called uh, Mally the Maker and the Queen in the Quilt and the link to uh, purchase the book if you're interested is in the description. All right, so I had a question for you. Let me know in the comments um, since uh, we're talking about sewing related and quilt related things. Uh, what's your favorite notion that you have in your sewing room? So mine, probably the, the item that I get the most questions about on social media or um, questions on the show is what scissors I use. I've, I've had these scissors for, I don't know how many years, 
maybe about 10 years. These are Kai number 7205 scissors, and I've tried different brands. These scissors just feel really great in my hand. They don't make my hand feel heavy. They have these rubber grips over here that feel nice to hold. And with my previous scissors, I don't know if it was because of the, the hinge or just the weight of the metal, every time I'd open the scissors, my hands would feel kind of strained. And I don't get that with these scissors. Plus they cut, they're super sharp. Also another question that I get on social media is where I get my scissors sharpened. I got them, I sent them out for sharpening a few years ago and I did mention it on a show, but um, the website is simplysharper.com and you just send your scissors or knives or um, other items through the mail, they sharpen them and they send them back to you. So um, I've used that service a couple times now and it was fantastic. And um, I do happen to, I don't know what the reason is, but I do happen to have a second pair of these exact same scissors. So when I send them out to be sharpened, uh, I save one, I just, send one off so I still have a usable pair of fabric scissors and then um, I sort of rotate in the, the sharp one uh, for my current uh, cutting in the sewing room. All right, um, I know a lot of you have already purchased the four pack video bundle and for that I am very grateful and thank you so much. Um, I listed it in stock yesterday morning. I tried to list it in stock earlier maybe a day or so before I said I was going to just to make sure there's no kinks I can test everything out and um, not have to rush through everything. So I did that yesterday morning. So um, if you've already purchased, thank you so much. And if you're interested in purchasing after the show, the link is in the description. Um, but we've prepared, Danny and I have prepared a trailer video just to show all of the four new projects and um, tell you a little bit about what's included in the four pack video. So enjoy. Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness and I am so excited to introduce you to my four latest patterns. They include PDF patterns with full color step-by-step -step instructions with a color photograph for just about every step. And in the videos, I walk you through the entire project from start to finish, including cutting out your pattern pieces, attaching your interfacing and finishing the projects all the way up until the very end. The Acorn Wallet secures with a magnetic snap and on the back there's a zippered pocket that expands to form sort of an accordion on the side edges and you can place coins, receipts, or other small items inside. The inside of the wallet features plenty of slots for storing credit cards. And this middle section is actually an accordion section. So it features two separate areas for storing cash and receipts and this middle section is actually a zipper pocket where you can store coins and other small items. The Acorn Wallet features full color step-by-step -step instructions with a photograph for just about every step and the video online workshop is one hour and 50 minutes long. The Blazing Star bag features a fun front zipper pocket. And inside the front zippered pocket is a slip pocket on one side and in the flap of the bag, it has a mesh zippered pocket. The bag features an adjustable strap so that you can make the strap to the length of your choosing. And on the back of the bag, there is a zippered pocket. The top closure is a recessed zipper and on the inside of the bag, there's a slip pocket on one side, and then on the other side of the lining, there is a zippered pocket. Everything is sewn right sides together and turned through one of the zipper pockets at the end. The Blazing Star bag features full color step-by-step -step instructions with a photograph for just about every step, and the video online workshop is two hours long. The Marlin backpack comes in two different sizes. This is size small, which would be a perfect size for a purse. And this is size large, with, which fits a standard size spiral notebook. This is a close up view of size small. And I'm going to flip to the back so that you can see that the adjustable straps and the loop piece are attached with this accent piece on the back. And the accent piece is stabilized with a small piece of either Peltex or Decoville heavy interfacing and that's attached to the wrong side of the foam so you won't see that in the finished bag. And here's a view of size large and these are optional side pockets so you can leave them off if you prefer. 
The front zipper pocket has plenty of storage space on the inside. And then in the main compartment of the bag, there are several different pockets. There's two slip pockets on one side, perfect for placing your wallet and cell phone. And then there's also a zipper pocket on the other side. So this bag is sewn right sides together and everything is turned right side out using the hole in the bottom of the zipper pocket. The Marlin backpack features full color step-by-step -step instructions with a photograph for just about every step and the video online workshop is two hours and 23 minutes long. The Opossum bag is a large size shoulder bag with a unique diagonal pocket across the front and there's also one on the back. The pocket secures with a magnetic snap and the Opossum bag came about because I was challenging myself to come up with a nice looking bag that didn't require any purse hardware except for the magnetic snaps. There is two different options for the strap attachment. One is for the strap to be sewn along the side edges of the bag. And the second option in the pattern instructions is for the strap to be sewn to the top seam of the bag. Here's another look at that diagonal front pocket. And here's uh, my, my magnetic snap holding it close. The inside of the bag also has a magnetic snap for the closure. And on the inside of the bag, it features a slip pocket on either side. The Opossum bag features full color step-by-step -step instructions with a photograph for just about every step. And the video online workshop is one hour and 18 minutes long. If you love those four projects, be sure to pick up your bundle now. It's at a $20 savings, so a final cost of $40 for four PDF patterns and four videos, and it's only available until May 20th, and then the bundle goes away forever. So grab your bundle and let's get sewing. All right, I hope you enjoyed that look at all of the projects, and I really, really appreciate the, the kind words uh, about the new sewing patterns. I was looking at my calendar the other day, and I saw that I started working on the first of the four patterns about six months ago, so um, it just, I am a proficient pattern writer, but everything else uh, that's involved in releases uh, takes me apparently quite a bit of time, and so uh, I'm really excited to have these new projects out in the world, and um, I hope you enjoy uh, sewing up the projects. So um, I'm going to be answering questions in just a minute, so if you have a question for me, Go ahead and type your question in the comments right now, either on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're watching our show. It can be a, a general sewing question, bag making related question, question about a notion or tool. Go ahead and type that in the comments right now. Um, before we get over to the questions, uh, two things. First, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. So last week we had uh, two prizes, one for a live winner and one for um, a second winner where you had the whole week to enter by leaving a comment. Uh, so the live winner from last week who I've already heard back from was Kimberly Rossi and then the second winner um, is Wendy Simpson. So congratulations to Wendy. Please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to put the email address up on the screen right now. Um, and if you ever need help with anything, uh, feel free to email me. And my email address is also at the end of every sewing pattern. Um, all right, before we get over to the questions, uh, Danny's favorite part of Social Sunday, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let me know in the comments that you're part of the Sew Sweetness squad. We really appreciate you tuning into the show. We appreciate uh, you chatting in the comments during the show. If you're on Facebook, we appreciate you being part of our Facebook group. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you how much this means uh, to me and Danny and the rest of our family. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Danny, take it away with some questions. Uh, Dana says, Danny, I need to find Doctor Who fabric for a sister. Um, Joanne's. Danny suggested Joanne fabrics if you live in the United States. Um, you might find some on Etsy or perhaps Spoonflower. I haven't checked in a while, uh, but Spoonflower is sort of a print-on-demand website where you can either purchase other people's designs or um, submit your own designs, your own artwork. Um, and again, it's Spoonflower.com for that address. 
Um, Cindy says, Danny, which doctor? Oh, which doctor is your favorite from Doctor Who, Danny? That would be Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor. Matt Smith is also my favorite Doctor, too. And Colleen said that they announced the new Doctor Who, which I have not seen. Oh, and I, I will not, check out after the show. I did not Thanks know about that know, either. Colleen. I'm sure we'll be able to find that information on YouTube. Um, Carrie says, how do you enter a soul along? So it is so at your own pace. So you don't need to formally enter anywhere. Um, just commit uh, to working on the project for the next four weeks. And um, so at your own pace. Uh, you do have the whole month to sew. If you'd like to finish the whole project in a day or two, you can do that as well. Just be sure to snap a photo of your project after each week's assignment um, so that you can still enter for the weekly prizes and there will also be prizes at the, the very end. Shirley says, Doctor Who, is there a TARDIS zipper pull? We don't have one yet, but that's a really great idea, so I'm going to add that to my list. Um, Julie says, where do you send scissors to get sharpened? The website is called simplysharper.com and you can find the information and um, how to mail off your scissors or other items um, on their website. Monica says, just looking over the requirements for the Acorn wallet, could you explain what fusible buckram is, please? I have a roller of it over here, so let me pop off and grab it. So you can find this at your local fabric shop and we have it on our website as well. We have it in the size of the pieces, 20 inches by 54 inches. So it is, let me open this roll. Uh, I know it's really hard to see on screen and know exactly what the interfacing feels like, but maybe Danny can flip to the overhead camera and I could sort of show you. So it's got a, oh my God, my hair all over the desk. Um, it's got a bit of stiffness to it. So if you've ever used Decker Bond or Craft Fuse, it's stiffer than that, but it's it's thin still. So it's not thick like Peltex or even Decoville Heavy, even though Decoville Heavy isn't all that thick. It's got a stiffness to it, which is great for, I used it in a few places in the pattern for the Acorn Wallet for, actually we've got the wallet right over here. So I used it for, threads everywhere. So I used it for this portion over here to make it sturdy and I also used it in both sides of this zipper portion and it's not fused in place and then turned. I kind of have you stick it in at the very end um, so you don't have to deal with bulkiness while you're turning say the zipper portion right side out. Um, I did experiment using it in, thanks Danny, you could switch back to the front camera. I did experiment using it for the, the body of the wallet as well in my initial prototype. And I thought it was a little too stiff and not, I don't wanna say crinkly, but like it wasn't smooth opening and closing like I would have liked. So I kind of altered the final pattern from what my original very first prototype was. Sarah, can we give a big birthday shout out to Becky? Her birthday's on Yay. Tuesday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Becky. Becky. I hope you have an awesome day on Tuesday. Um, Tabitha says, your videos are definitely worth the price. Thank you so much, Tabitha. I think I get questions sometimes, and I think there was a question either today or yesterday on social media if um, the four new projects were good for beginners or confident beginners. And I would say um, definitely I recommend them with the video because it's nice to have the video to follow along with. Um, obviously, I have the full color step photographs in the PDF patterns, but um, sometimes it's nice to just, well, some people like the company of sewing along with me or hearing my voice while they're sewing the project and some just like uh, the extra reinforcement that the video gives. Although the patterns could be sewn without the video, some uh, that are visual learners just like to have uh, both the pattern and the video. Carrie says, are your shaped pattern pieces designed to cut face up on top of the fabric right side? up or face up on the fabric right side down? That's a really great question. So I would say it usually doesn't matter. And often when I'm cutting out fabric, I make my choices depending on if it's like a dark fabric, light fabric. Oftentimes I'll cut on the wrong side, especially for um, pieces that are cut on the fold since you're getting sort of mirror image on both halves. The one exception for that um, and I think this is the only exception out of one of the few exceptions is the 
the opossum bag because it has very specific right and left pieces. Um, I specify actually in the pattern instructions and in the video what, where to put your pattern piece. So if, if you need to, I'll tell you in the pattern, I need you to put this on the right side of the fabric or the wrong side of the fabric. So that's one of the very few cases where I actually specify. Um, other than that, it usually doesn't matter. So we have another birthday. Happy birthday to Robbie. Happy birthday, Robbie. Happy birthday, Robbie. <laughs> Angela says, I wonder on the Acorn wallet in one of the accordion sections, can you fit a checkbook in it? Um, I don't know. I haven't tried my checkbook. Danny, can you talk for just a second so I can run and get my checkbook and, and test it out? I'm wondering who the new Doctor Who is going to be. Colleen, you really got me distracted. I'm not going to lie. I'm very tempted to go over and Google who this person may be, but I feel like I'll miss something for the show and be fired, and then William's going to re replace me. Okay, all right, I'm back. Let me push this out of the way. Okay, so I did, I don't want to show you any of my check information, but like my checkbook is uh, in there and it, it does fit. Great question about that. Lure says, can the flat pocket on the Blazing Star bag be an accordion pocket? Um, let's see, that's a good question. Do you mean the slip pocket to change this pocket style, or do you mean for this pocket to be completely different, the zipper part? Uh, I'm not sure which one you meant, but feel free to email me after the show, and I'm happy to um, talk about uh, what you had in mind as far as the, the Blazing Star bag. Kathy says, thank you, Sarah, for keeping your bundle so reasonably, reasonably priced. I love them. Well, I really appreciate that feedback. Um, we've really kept the four-pack video bundle prices the same since we started doing them, which was maybe five or six years ago. So it's $40. You get the four PDF patterns and the four videos. So I feel like it's a, a good deal to get the bundle if you're also interested in the videos because um, normally the PDF patterns by themselves we sell for $9. So it breaks down to $10 each for both the pattern and the video. Uh, Brenda has a good question. Are the patterns going to be sold individually once the bundle ends? So actually the individual patterns are available now. You can find them on my website and um, you can either buy just the PDF by itself or the single PDF with the video. JP says, when making a bag, is it okay to make the foam um, a quarter inch smaller so there will not be so much bulk to sew? Yes. Um, it will be easier to do that if you're using a uh, fusible foam because then you can just fuse it and the fabric will be attached rather than basting stitches um, as per sew-in foam, but it's also possible to do it with sew-in foam by cutting the um, minus the quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've done it in um, one or two patterns in the past. The Park Sling backpack comes to mind. Um, you can either use uh, a washable fabric glue stick such as the Fonz and Porter glue stick that I like to use, or um, you can use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, and you don't have to apply it on the whole entire piece, uh, just the perimeter of the piece is completely fine. Tammy says, hi Sarah, great projects. Thank you very much, Tammy. Why did you choose Buckram for the Acorn Wallet, and where did you get it? So um, I actually bought it online, um, but since then, because I just wanted to test it out, but once I decided to use it in the pattern, um, I bought some to carry in our online shop. So we have it on our website in case you're interested in it. Um, sorry, what was the second part of the question? I already forgot. Um, I'll have to come back to it. Why did I, oh, why did I decide to use this? Um, I decided to use this because um, a couple friends recommended this for wallets or credit card slots and I had never used it before or maybe Maybe I tested it but years ago, but I never actually used it in one of my patterns. And so I decided to try it out. And like I said, my initial prototype, I used it in all sorts of different places. And in the finalized pattern, I decided um, what particular combination of interfacings I like the best. So I like, well, I love Sarah, interfacing. I, go on yes, on. a tangent. Yeah, there's uh, many questions about, is there a replacement for Buckram? to use instead? Oh, that's a good question. So it's not exactly the same, but if you'd like to use perhaps uh, 
Decker Bond or Decaville Light instead of the Buckram, um, I think that should be that should be fine. I, I haven't personally used those for the Acorn Wallet, but um, I, if I recall, a couple of my testers did, pattern testers did, and so um, they said it was fine with the substitution. And I can imagine it would be fine just thinking through that as well. Julie says, will you do second so long on the Acorn Wallet? Yes, I actually did. Well, how about you let me know in the comments, since the Acorn Wallet was such a close vote with the Blazing Star bag, um, I was thinking about it. Would you like to also see, not at the same time, of course, a second so long for the Acorn Wallet, maybe later this summer or early fall? Let me know in the comments if you would. Catherine says, is the new backpack good for beginner bag makers? I would say... Yes, if you've made a bag before, um, and like I was saying earlier, especially the pattern in combination with the video, I think, yeah, I think I would feel comfortable recommending that. And I'm also, even though there's a video available, I'm also available anytime via email. You can email me anytime with questions or if you get stuck. Um, Danny, could you put my email address on the screen one more time? Thank you, Danny. There's my email address. And like I also mentioned earlier, my email is also listed at the end of every PDF sewing pattern. Danny, you'll have to let me have, let me know after the show um, what the real time comments were for the, oh, thank you. You read my mind. All right, so yes for so long for the Acorn Wallet. Awesome. Bunch of yeses. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for commenting, answering my question. Uh, Maribel says, hi Sarah, I would like to know with the new patterns, will I be able to download the video to my computer or must I log onto the website to view it? That's a really great question. I've also noted this in the product listing or at least I, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, because of the nature of how we have our videos set up, they only stream from your account on my website. They unfortunately do not download. A few years ago we had various problems with other businesses and companies downloading some of our other videos and posting them to their own social media as their own videos. And so unfortunately, because that happened to us in the past, um, the videos are protected and only viewable from your account on my website. Um, the patterns are downloadable. Um, oh, by the way, two things I'd like to mention. Um, the patterns you can download from your account as many times as you need to. For instance, um, you can download it on your computer, on your cell phone, on your iPad. Uh, if you forgot where you put it on your computer, you could download it again. The videos you can stream an unlimited amount of times from your account on my website. Um, so if you buy the video now, make it now, great. If you'd like to make it again in five, five or so years, you can watch the video again. Rob says, is the small backpack okay for a toddler or, or would I need to reduce it further? Let me grab the small backpack. There we go. So here's the size of the small backpack. And Danny, would you say this would be good for a toddler? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's about the size of a small Cumberland, right? Yeah, the Cumberland backpack, um, when my kids were little, when we'd go to Disney World, I made Cumberland backpacks. I don't have any on the set to show you size comparison, but... Um, I would say yes, though. Okay. Yeah, I would say, especially since I mentioned in the trailer video, that would be good a, a good purse size. I think for a toddler backpack, it would also work. Oh, good question. Becky says, do you have a pattern for the flying geese on the wallet? So on the, the flap of the wallet, I used paper piece, foundation paper piece, flying geese. That's not part of the pattern, um, but uh, there's a lot of resources online. The, the one that I used was... Um, a mini block pattern from Allison Glass. I just went on her website and found one that had flying geese um, and printed it at the percentage that I want. I think I printed it at 250%. So I just kind of printed one out, measured it, and you know printed another one out at a larger percentage. Also, Lee Heinrich has um, perfect flying geese on her website. Um, that's another resource. I'm sure there's others um, if you feel like Googling, but those are at least two to get you started. Uh, Soap and Girl says, I can attest to that. My computer d dies and I lost all my saved files. I just logged back into So Sweetness and was able to download them again. Yes, thank you for that feedback. Um, you can also, I also highly recommend, just as a further backup, to always save any downloaded PDF patterns or other important files um, somewhere in the cloud, whatever your preference. 
Google Drive. I let, I use Dropbox a lot. Um, I think Dropbox is free up until a certain amount of storage space, perhaps. I think I'm remembering correctly. I have a ton of things in Dropbox as well. So there's several options for cloud storage as well. Um, Kath says, can you show the blazing star next to the chickadee for size? Oh, great question. I happen to have the chickadee over here because I've had it on the set recently. I think she said the blazing star next to the chickadee. So as you can see, the, the blazing star is quite a bit smaller than the chickadee backpack. And um, let me hold up the chickadee with the, the large Marlin backpack as well. So this is size large of the Marlin backpack. Let me try to hold them even. They're pretty close in size. Pretty close in width also. Elizabeth says, do you cork a lot in your bags or quilting cotton? Um, I do love using cork. Usually I like using it for either straps or accents of a bag. I will sometimes make a bag out of all cork. Um, I happen to have this. Uh, this is the free Oreo bag pattern in video. This one's all in candy red cork. Um, I would say while I love cork super a lot, um, in my, when I make bags for a new pattern, I usually make the first bag, um, for the pattern, PDF pattern instructions. And because I write the pattern first and then I start sewing everything out, um, often I'm making adjustments as I go, sometimes using the seam ripper a lot. And so cork is not a great thing for that initial first bag. And also sometimes, so the second bag is the one I make on camera for the videos and um, sometimes I just like to have thinner layers when I'm on camera so I don't, I sweat a lot to begin with and I just like to have the thinner layers when I'm on camera, even though I could do it on cork, with cork on camera, obviously I did that with the Oreo bag. Um, so I don't work with cork as much as I'd like to. If I wasn't mostly making bags for pattern writing or for videos, I'd probably use it in every single project to be honest. Clovis says, does the buckram have to be fusible? Um, for the purposes of the acorn wallet, the buckram does not need to be fusible. Um, the one that I have from Pelon happens to be fusible, but because you're just inserting it in between layers and then top stitching, um, it could be uh, just a sew-in buckram as well. Kelly says, Sarah, could you use Decoville Heavy or Craftex instead of Peltex in the sewing room stand? Um, that's a good question. So the sewing room stand is a, I don't have it on set to grab and show you, but it is a stand to hold your iPad or tablet while you're say working in the sewing room. I feel like I want to stick with the recommendation of Peltex just because it's a little bit thicker, even though the Jacobville Heavy is also stiff. I feel like I want that extra stiffness and thickness in that particular project. Usually I say they're interchangeable, but for that project, I'm sort of leaning toward just sticking with the Peltex. Chandra says, Sarah, you are 100% responsible for teaching me how to sew bags. I started sewing masks when COVID hit, and that is all I knew how to do. Now I have made at least 20 of your different patterns. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with, with me. First off, I'm really honored that you chose my bag patterns because I know there's a ton of options out there. So thank you so much. And... Um, well, thank you for your service with sewing those masks in the early days. Yep. Thank you very much. D says, I think Sarah's videos have to be helpful for everyone. She is so clear in her explanations, which is not something that everyone does well. Thank you very much for that feedback. I really appreciate it. I think being an introvert, I just don't feel super comfortable with, um, like background chat. Like I just can't, while I'm sewing a project, like my only focus is the instruction portion of it. And I just don't feel that comfortable instructing and chatting. So I guess I'm just thankful that I, I'm not good at that. Um, but I really appreciate the feedback about the videos. Kristen says an old term, but I have worn grooves in your videos. Can't imagine not having them so well done. Well, thank you for that. Also, um, if you've never used any of my step-by-step -step videos before, they're all timestamps. So um, like Kristen mentions about wearing the grooves in the video. If you need to go back to a certain step, uh, you can watch it as much as you want. And rather than having to scroll through the whole video, you can just click on the step. Um, the bottom of the video is where you find the timestamps and there's sort of little bubbles with, with the step numbers and you just click on the one that you need to get you to, get you to that step. 
Shirley says, what bag behind you that is red? Oh, I actually, I actually, that's kind of, I have to admit to being a little sneaky because I had this in the basement for a while and I remembered that everyone always um, calls out this bag and compliments it. So this is the Renegade bag. Yes, yes. So that's why I put it back on the set because I remembered everyone always really likes this bag. You should put it back out there. Um, this is the Renegade bag and this print is unfortunately out of print because I bought it years ago, but it's from a, a company called Ink and Spindle. They're located in Australia. They have a website where they have other fabrics available and this is actually a hand printed fabric. So um, I was on their website the other day and about to make a purchase, but still kind of collecting things in my cart. But I found some other prints that I'd like to purchase from them, including a few with birds. Um, I have just purchased the four pack bundle. I am so excited. Thank you for creating the pattern, Sarah. Well, thank you. And I have to say, um, without all of your support, um, we certainly wouldn't be able to continue doing this. So thank you so much for allowing me to do what I super love the most in the world. Kathy says, hi, Sarah. Have you ever used satin for bag lining? I actually haven't. Um, I don't have a certain reason. Um, I guess never crossed my mind before. Maybe I'll have to write that on the list of things to check out. Laura says, is there any way to cast the videos to a TV? Um, I know there is. Uh, I usually Chromecast. don't. Chrome, Danny's recommending Chromecast. Whatever TV service you're using, if you just Google how to cast videos from Vimeo to my whatever your TV is, um, Vimeo is the service that I use to um, sort of host the videos for my website. So um, that's a place to start. And if you're still having difficulty, feel free to email me and I'm happy to help you as best I can. Um, but uh, I have not ever personally cast um, videos from the internet to TV. So I'll either have to do some research or maybe Danny can help me with that. Um, Linda says, I missed the beginning of the show. What was your first solo long of the new four pack bundle? So the so long will be for the Blazing Star bag. Danny, could you put that graphic up on the screen one more time? Um, the votes for the Blazing Star bag and the Acorn Wallet were less than one percentage point away. Um, but the Blazing Star bag will be our spring so long. Here's the schedule. I will also send that, that schedule out in the newsletter tomorrow. I'll put it up on the blog and on social media. And um, depending on when I check the comments after the show, if a lot of people would like for the Acorn Wallet to also be a future so long. Um, we'll hopefully have that later this year as well. No, we're not done. Okay, I don't. I don't know. Sometimes I know you're busy yeah, clicking. I, I hear yeah. you clicking I'm away. So, Michelle says, "What is the name of the pattern for a computer bag?" I have maybe three that jump to my mind first. Um, the Lilium laptop bag is a padded bag for um, a laptop. Um, from Minikin season one, there's the grab and go sleeve, which is a, I don't have it up here anymore. It was up here the other day. It's a sleeve with handles to store your um, laptop, iPad, other devices. And there's also that one, uh, the third bag's over here. I would say this would be more of a su substantial choice if you needed uh, more items in your laptop bag. This is the triple threat briefcase and it's got three separate sections in the bag for um, computers, notebooks, books, folders, um, other items. <clears throat> well, um, there's someone in the chat that says their name is Bob Ramirez. I'm guessing it's your dad, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. And he wants to give a bundle away to, let me find her. Did he really say that or are you just making that up? I'll, I'll put the comment. I, you know, okay. sometimes when you write something, it's not always legible. No, I, I, if you say it's true, I believe you. Here it is. It's a little short. I'll spot you. So that means Bob is going to be purchasing Ann Lintel, uh four-pack bundle. That's awesome. Thanks, Dad. So, All right. Anne Little, if you're still watching, my dad... There's her comment. There's Anne's She's comment. She's got other comments, but that's the most recent. Well, thank you, Anne, for the nice comments. And my dad has volunteered to, to purchase your four-pack video bundle for you. 
Um, so please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with um, that bundle courtesy of my dad. Thanks, dad. By the way, if you didn't know, I've mentioned it a couple times on the show in the past. Uh, my parents both work for us, so um, during the summer, the kids will also be working more for us. Uh, right now, they're on, you know, obviously school all day, but um, they're excited to be working over the summer also. That's a nice... Elaine says, Sarah's cork is the best. Thank you, Elaine. We're trying to add uh, more new colors and prints to the shop also in the future. Um, Maribel says, Tara, Sarah's cork is amazing. I promise you will get hooked. Thank you very much. Teresa says, what stabilizer would you recommend to give quilting cotton the consistency of vinyl? Foam seems to be a little stiff. Um, I guess it depends mm, on the project. I usually like to think about the pro in terms of the particular project first and then think about the interfacing. Um, you can email me after the show if you have a certain project in mind that you're looking to get a recommendation for interfacing on. Jackie says, I have my seven month old granddaughter watching Sew Sweetness today. Yep, you have to start them sewing young. I hear from a lot of people via email that uh, home economics classes like that are not taught as much in school as they used to. And I think that's kind of sad because I, I think about the, the kids coming up that are missing out on at least getting exposure to sewing. You, you know, not everyone, of course, is going to enjoy sewing, but at least if you are exposed to it, you get a chance to maybe pick up um, a hobby that you'll love for the rest of your life. Um, Elizabeth says, would cork work for the new Blazing Star bag? Yes. Um, so this, the Blazing Star bag, some of the testers made it in vinyl, I think real leather, and also cork. So it does work with those types of substrates also. Um, Christina says, would leather work for leather for this bag work? Uh, was she referencing the Blazing Star bag? I, I assume so. They were near each other. I did see people make, I think there was a comment on social media about the four new patterns, if they could ma be made using leather or faux leather or vinyl. And I would say, I think I did see all of the testers, not all of the testers, all of the four pro new projects made by at least one or two testers in vinyl. Um, even... The opossum bag, but I would say I would be a little hesitant about vinyl for this bag just because of the bulk. I would say if your machine is a workhorse, go ahead. Um, the other three projects, I, I don't think I would have much hesitation. Um, sometimes, obviously, sometimes when you work with vinyl, you have to make small modifications such as maybe an adjustable strap, maybe not four layers of the vinyl, but um, in the general aspect of the construction of the bag, yes, I think it would be perfectly fine. Kathleen says, would cork be suitable for the outside of the acorn wallet? I didn't see any of the testers make the acorn wallet with cork, but I did see a few make it with vinyl and um, seemed like it was fine. I think I mentioned on the show last week the, the accordion pocket over here on the back of the wallet. If you're using cork, perhaps make it just a flat zipper pocket because this accordion piece is sort of folded over tightly and I would just be concerned with those two tight folds with the cork possibly I don't I don't know I didn't make it with cork but that's my initial thought about it um, so maybe just a flat um, zipper pocket for the outside if you're making it with cork Kathy says I also was wondering if the front pocket on the blazing star could be accordion the whole pocket so zipper still there just not complete flap opening do you mean like the backpack, like not, when you say not complete flap opening, I think I understand. So the backpack is not complete open. If that's what you mean, then I, all I did was I add, added these little fabric tabs on either end, which obviously are in the, the Marlin backpack instruction. If you bought the bundle, maybe you can just take a look at what I did with this in the Marlin backpack, and then you can very easily add that to the Blazing Star bag instead because this one does open completely flat. So if you didn't want it to, you can just add those little fabric tabs, one on each side. Um, Alex says, Sarah and Danny, would you happen to know if your cork is vegan? Um, off the top of my head, I think it is. Um, I know they have a certification from PETA 
and I can't remember if that means it's vegan or not. Um, feel free to email me after the show. I can look up. I have all sorts of information from the manufacturer, so I can, I'm happy to look that up and email you directly if you'll send me an email after the show. Karen says, I just heard Mikey. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Violet is, uh, usually during the show, Violet and William have Mikey, our standard poodle, in the basement. Yep, I hear him barking now. <laughs> Um, Alice says, I have been teaching sewing to two groups of girls in my sewing room. Their mothers don't sew and the girls are excited to learn. That's really awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And I think it's really special. Every once in a while, we get a photograph in our Sew Sweetness Facebook group of someone who taught their either neighbor, granddaughter, um, daughter to sew. And they made a Sew Sweetness project, um, with a little assistance, but they mostly made the bag or pouch themselves. And I always get a huge kick out of seeing those photos with the girls proudly holding their finished uh, So Sweetness makes. So um, yeah, those are probably the most special photographs I usually see um, of the makes of young sewists making bags. Kathleen says, Danny, can you please if possible share a link for the bag bundle before we leave the live? It is actually in the description. Um, I made sure Danny, I didn't check that he followed. I, I checked it. Okay. I asked Danny to put it at the very top of the description. So it should be there. Whether you're watching she on says Facebook ask, or I think she means yelled at me. <laughs> Kathy says cork is from a tree would be vegan. Yeah, I, that's for sure. Correct. The cork is, um, thank you very much, Maribel. I just wasn't sure. I know the backing fabric is polyester and cotton. I just didn't want to misspeak uh, on the live show. Thank you for that. Uh, um, I guess feedback about the previous question. I really appreciate it. Elaine says, could you use cotton for just the accordion section? Oh, if you're talking about the wallet. Um, yeah, you sure could. If you wanted to do maybe even just cork for the flap and then cotton for the rest or cotton for the middle, that would work. Penny says, did any testers make the opossum less than 100%? Yes, they sure did. I'm not sure if they posted in the group yet. I think off the top of my head, I think I'm remembering that maybe one made the opossum bag, which is this one right here, um, at maybe 75%. Um, I'm sure they'll be posting their pictures in the group shortly if they haven't already. Are you calling on the questions, Danny? All right, I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I will be back again next Sunday live, um, same time, time, same channel. Danny will be joining me on set next week. And next week we will have uh, another edition of Bag Lab. So one last thing to get to is uh, the giveaway prize. And um, so the giveaways, you have one week to enter. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to enter. I randomly draw a winner out of all of the comments that we receive on this show on Facebook and YouTube. I combine them all together. And I'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show. And I also have, well, let me show you the prize first. So I showed this fabric on the show a couple weeks ago. This is a uh, Kona sheen that, let me have Danny switch to the overhead camera. Would you mind, Danny? So these are nice and sparkly. I super love them and they're in rainbow colors. So this is the giveaway prize for tonight. And let me flip that over. And um, thank you, Danny. Um, I have an extra question for you that you can answer in the comments for an extra method of entry. And my question is, uh, what's your favorite of the four new patterns? So. Uh, did you maybe like the Blazing Star bag, um, the Acorn wallet, uh, the Marlin backpack, or the Opossum bag? Which was your favorite? Go ahead and just type your answer in the comments right now on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching. And thank you so much for watching our show. Thank you so much for your support, um, Danny, and I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.